this is a C4 parametric equation sum and we have to use the concept of C1 coordinate geometry and C2 solving trigonometry to do this particular parametric sum parametric equation in question number A we have to show that the curve crosses the x-axis x-axis means Cartesian and the T is the parametric parameter so x-axis means at x-axis y equals to 0 therefore y is 1 minus 2 cos t equals to 0 so that means 1 equals to 2 cos t and cos t equals to half now in order to solve this let me review this a little bit C2 trigonometric solving the first thing that you do is look at the sign not si and sine sine means si g and sine so cos t this angle is t theta cos theta is positive positive means this quadrant is sine cos tan all positive this quadrant is only sine positive this is only tan positive and this is cos positive so c a s t cos positive means cos t equals to positive half so the positive means this would be here in the fourth quadrant and in the first quadrant because here all positive including cos and here exclusively cos positive we draw the quadrant first quadrant always with the horizontal line always with the horizontal line step two is we find the basic angle the basic angle always looks at the value now it ignores the sign 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 now we consider consider only the half so if it was sine theta is minus a then the basic angle theta would be sine inverse of a even if it was sine theta is plus a the basic angle would still be sine inverse of a so for basic angle we ignore the positive negative sign therefore t equals to cos inverse of half cos inverse of half is going to be um, adjacent by hypotenuse this is going to be 60 degree but remember this is C4 you cannot write 60 degree you have to write in radian mode remember from C2 rule 60 degree means pi by 3 pi radian is 180 degree 180 by 3 is 60 degree now step 3 you have to choose the angle in order to choose the angle if it's on the first quadrant if this is the basic angle then the angle is going to be equal to the basic angle if it's in the second quadrant then the angle is going to be 180 minus basic angle if it's in the third quadrant then the angle is going to be 180 plus basic angle always meaning this is the this then this then this always starting from zero here and if the angle is on the fourth quadrant then the theta is going to be 360 minus basic angle our answer so this is pi by 3 this is pi by 3 always with the horizontal line so T would be first quadrant means that the basic angle is the angle so T equals to pi by 3 and the fourth quadrant means 360 minus that so 360 means 2 pi minus pi by 3 so 2 3 the 6 minus 1 is 5 pi by 3 answer t equals to pi by 3 and t equals to 5 pi by 3 that's exactly what they asked for so in order to do this sum you have to remember the C2 rule the mark is only 2 but that's the presentation that you have to do now we have to find the region the shaded region area the rule for area this is also a C2 rule the rule for area is limit y dx that's what you do so now we know the limit t equals to pi by 3 to 5 pi by 3 that's what we have to do and the area is going to give us y dx so let me do it here it will be easier to see area 
equals to so limit I don't know the limit in the Cartesian form I'm writing x1 to x2 y dx so now let's do the substitution since I already know the limit substitution t equals to pi by 3 and 5 pi by 3 uh, let me do the derivative first since we have to we need dt so x equals to t minus 2 sine t therefore dx by dt equals to 1 minus 2 derivative of sine t is cos t therefore dx is 1 minus 2 cos t dt okay I got the substitution for dx uh, so area would be equals to limit is going to be from pi by 3 to 5 pi by 3 now we have to substitute y y is 1 minus 2 cos t so 1 minus 2 cos t and dx the substitution of dx is 1 minus 2 cos t dt so this can be written as pi by 3 5 pi by 3 1 minus 2 cos t whole squared dt that's all we had to show and it is done the next one is use this integral to find the exact value so this is basically an integration sum again now we have to do this integration so c is the first step we should do pi by 3 5 pi by 3 is break this down into a minus b whole squared so this would be a squared minus 2ab to, to the 4 cos t plus b squared is 2 squared is 4 cos t squared is cos squared dt so in order to integrate this it is easy to integrate this one 1 integration of 1 is going to be t integration of cos t is going to be sine t but how do you integrate cos squared for that you need to use a common identity this is a c3 rule double angle half angle we can integrate only cos theta or sine theta if it is a power cos square or sine square we use this identity cos 2 theta is 1 minus 2 sine squared theta this is 2 theta this is theta or it could be 2 cos squared theta minus 1 now if I take this this second one here so I can write cos 2 theta is 2 cos squared theta minus 1 if I take the minus to the other side cos 2 theta plus 1 if I take the 2 downstairs then cos squared theta can be written as cos 2 theta plus 1 divided by 2 that means I can write cos squared theta as the double angle cos 2 theta plus 1 by 2 let's write this down now pi by 3 5 pi by 3 1 minus 4 cos t plus 4 instead of cos squared t I'm going to write this cos 2t plus 1 divided by 2 dt so this 2 and this 2 cancels off so pi by 3 to 5 pi by 3 1 minus 4 cos t plus 2 into cos 2t plus 2 into 1 dt this would be 1 plus 2 is 3 pi by 3 to 5 pi by 3 this would be 3 minus 4 cos t plus 2 cos 2t two dt let's integrate 3 integral is going to be 3t 4 is 4 cos t is sine t divided by chain rule the angle is 1 so it will be 1 plus 2 cos theta is sine 2t divided by the angle of 2t is going to be 2 and we put the limit pi by 3 to 5 pi by 3 
so if we put 5 pi by 3 first it would be 3 instead of t we write 5 pi by 3 this would be 4 sine 5 pi by 3 plus this 2 and this 2 cancels sine 2 into 5 pi by 3 minus if you put pi by 3 3 into pi by 3 minus 4 sine into pi by 3 plus sine 2 into pi by 3 so this 3 and this 3 cancels this would be 5 pi minus 4 now sine 5 pi by 3 let's use the calculator sine remember it has to be in the radian mode so 5 pi by 3 so this is minus 0 0.866 remember if you have uh, the modern calculator a newer version then this is root 3 by 2 0 0.866 means root 3 by 2 so this is minus root 3 by 2 plus 2 5 is a 10 pi by 3 sine 10 pi by 3 that is also minus 0 0.866 meaning minus root 3 by 2 okay this 3 and this 3 cancel that is pi minus 4 now sine pi by 3 means 60 degree sine 60 degree is root 3 by 2 this is 2 pi by 3 so again sine 2 pi by 3 0.866 meaning root 3 by 2 so 5 pi minus pi is 4 pi this 2 and this 2 cancels this would be minus minus plus 2 root 3 this would be minus root 3 by 2 then this would be this 2 and this 2 cancels so minus into minus is plus plus 2 root 3 then this minus and this minus this would be minus root 3 by 2 so this would be 4 pi plus now if I take all the root 3 outside it would be 2 minus half plus 2 minus half into root 3 so 4 pi plus 2 plus 2 is 4 minus half minus half is minus 1 4 minus 1 is 3 so 3 root 3 let's check the mark scheme the first one is this this was given all we needed is to show that two marks for that the next one is the derivative then we substitute it and this is, was also we had to show it the integral of this they did the same substitution double angle half angle and the answer is 4 pi plus 3 root 3 okay the majority of the candidates gained part a meaning they could solve the c2 trigonometric equation solving and a good proportions managed to produce the answer for p a good proportion what does that mean it means they're being subtle that means many people could do that but many people also couldn't do that some candidates suggested that the area of r was this of course that means they mixed up with the volume formula which made the question rather trivial although that happened to the true uh, happened to be true here as y equals to dy by dt so they just made a mess of the question uh, the integration in part c although well done by good candidate good can remember the language the way they are trying to give clues to the teachers now rather trivial meaning the trivial means unimportant so they are calculation made the sum unimportant meaning the lost mark is the the language they are using they don't want to be too clear about what's going on proved a challenge for many weaker candidates we don't know how many of the candidates who sat for the exam were weaker so that's why that's another uh, obscurity here uh, they couldn't do this they use this wrong formula or something similar it may have been that some candidates were pressed for time so that means pressed for time what type of a language is this press for time means 
they couldn't finish it in time time management problem this point but even those who knew that a cosine double angle half angle was needed often made a sign error plus minus error so remember they were careless mistake you have to be very very careful and do these sums over and over again so the idea for C3 and C4 is to keep doing the same sums over and over again forgot to multiply their expression for this by 4 or even forgot to integrate that expression it has to be mentioned again that the limits were sometimes used as pi equals to 180 degree remember it has to be radian and remember pi is 3.14 to radian so be very very careful about this this is the grade boundary for Jan 2006 everyone who took the exam this is not actual the score that they got this was a conversion of UMS uniform mark system meaning if they lost some mark or if they gain some more mark than others it has been converted to this so if you got 61 61 is not your raw score the score that you get in the exam meaning maybe if some questions were irregular for everyone they omitted it and they would give you some additional point for that so 61 was the standard for 80 it's pretty high for any C C4 paper 53 was the standard for 70 meaning B so this can be considered as A B C D and E 